So we're gonna make our way over to Chinatown, grab some food, go see some new stuff, cruise around, and just enjoy the day. It's summertime, and this is all gonna be shot in the Leica Q2. What's good y'all? Welcome back to the lab. For today's video, we're going to go over the Leica Q2. Uh, this has definitely been my favorite camera as of lately. I've been taking it with me everywhere. It's a nice point and shoot with some really powerful features uh, that I'm going to go over in this video. And you guys are going to understand why I love this camera so much. And you're going to see test footage, also photos, and a vlog of me exploring Chinatown, exploring different parts of New York, but just using this camera as, as my main camera. I've been using this for the past couple months, and if you want to learn more about the Leica Q2, please keep watching. All right, so we just got some Joe's steamed rice roll over in Flushing. Uh, Jalen drenched hers in soy sauce. I'm gonna add some hot sauce to mine. It's not soy sauce, I don't know what it is. It's not soy sauce. So we're at a food court, security guard, sprayed some hand sanitizer on me, both of us, and then he also scanned our temperature too. So this camera features a 47.3 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor uh, for a point and shoot, which is really impressive because you get huge image size uh, with a small camera. It comes with a fixed 28 millimeter lens, so that means this thing can't detach. But you can shoot in three different crop modes, which features 35, 50, and 75. That actually allows you to punch in on things for video, also for photo. But I think this feature for video actually allows you to just have way more leeway when it comes to getting different angles. It has a 3.68 electronic viewfinder that is also touchscreen, and it shoots in the DNG RAW format and also in JPEG. The video formats that it shoots is DCI and also Ultra HD, which pretty much just means 4K24, 4K30, and it also shoots 120p, uh, which gives you that smooth, buttery, slow motion that everybody loves, but it is only in 1080. It doesn't have 4K60, which would have been an actual game changer if it did. Uh, but I'm sure when the Leica Q3 comes out, it'll probably have these features. Uh, the ISO range is from 50 to 50,000, which is kind of crazy. I don't usually go past 3,200. 6,400 is actually fine, uh, but yeah, 50,000 if you guys need to uh, bump it up that high. And it has a pretty cool Bluetooth and Wi-Fi feature that uh, Jalen shows off uh, with us at Central Park. Uh, she sets it up on a tripod and she was able to get these shots with it, which was pretty cool, and this was shot on our anniversary. So this thing is IP52 weather sealed. Uh, you can get raindrops on it, uh, just don't go dipping it into the water. Let's take this time to talk about the pros and the cons of this camera. And one thing I really loved is the simplicity. It doesn't have a bunch of buttons and pretty much when you switch it, you could go from auto to uh, manual, full manual if you want to. And to change the shutter is right on top. This is more like a traditional film camera, but in digital form, I guess. It has a discrete shutter. So when I'm shooting out on the streets, it just sounds soft and very non-intrusive. If I was to take a photo of somebody, or something, it's just not a huge like clack. It just sort of has that sound. Let me let you guys hear it. It's just, okay, we're done. Like that's, that's it. It has a macro mode, which is pretty cool. 
you literally just turn the knob to the macro mode. I love taking macro photography and I also love implementing macro videography into my shots uh, just to get a cool diverse set of clips uh, and just to change things up. I think when you tap into the realm of shooting things that people don't typically see on a daily basis, like when you get the water droplets or like a super close up on fire, people are just fascinated by those shots because of how different they look. Um, and the simple fact that I could just turn the knob and get access to that mode is so clutch because I would typically bring an external lens, um, which would have to be in my backpack, and then I'll have to, you know, take it off, put it on, but boom, just like this, just a twist. And I got macro mode. Now let's talk about some of the cons, and most of the cons that I have are mostly video features, and it's not really a fair uh, debate because this camera is more photo heavy. I mean, you look at the images that come off this thing, and you're just like blown away by it. For video features, it doesn't have a microphone port, uh, which is fine too. This next test, I'm gonna see if uh, I can hyperlapse with this camera. Hopefully this turns out good. Would I be happier if I had it? Uh, I probably wouldn't even use it, to be honest with you. I don't mind that it's not there, is what I'm trying to say. I also had a problem focusing uh, video, but this is only because I had it set up to where I was vlogging myself. Got to reload on all the Asian essentials. Right, if I get this, you yeah, already know it's good. I think something I love about flushing is that I feel like I'm in Asia. Even when I'm at home in New York. I could have set it to uh, the face tracking mode, which I kind of learned about later on. Uh, but I was doing it more traditional style where I was just like doing a half click and trying to make sure I was in focus. And this, this camera is not built for vlogging. It's not built uh, to do that. But I was just testing it out in that way. And the video focusing uh, for me, just only, only when I was trying to film myself like this. When I was filming this way, it was on point. It's fast every time. It's another con, but it's not really a con. It's just a problem that I had uh, when I was shooting. And I'm sure most of you guys watching this video uh, probably aren't really going to even use the video features, but this video focuses on the video features for this camera because I just wanted to test the video functions. And the last con is that it doesn't have a time-lapse feature, but um, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. All right, so we're currently in Brooklyn uh, at the plant store. A lot of greenery going on behind me. I'm currently at half battery, but the gimbal is dead. Uh, but uh, we're going, I mean, Jalen was looking up a place to get tacos. We're gonna go Brooklyn Chinatown. Hopefully, still have enough uh, battery for this video. You like this song? Ooh. All right, now let's talk about the battery. The battery just pops out like this. And I usually just like to step out the house uh, with one extra battery. To be specific, it's an 1860 mAh battery. Uh, which approximately gives you 370 something shots. But from my experience, I could go a full day shooting with just one battery. Photo, video, the whole shebang. Uh, not for a job, but I'm just talking about like casual, going out, exploring the city, and you know, just shooting touristy photos or just shooting photos just, you know, just to shoot. As for rigs, I use this Manfrotto tripod. Um, this just allowed me to record myself vlogging wise and I can set up shots, put it somewhere and it's just super discreet and lightweight. Stopped at this one spot. Jalen looked up for tacos. It's called what, Bronco? Tacos El Bronco. Red Tacos El Bronco. I got yeah, six tacos, two al pastor, two lengua, one chorizo, one carne asada. I'm trying everything. Whoo, probably go in. And for the more stabilized cinematic shots, I use the Xeon Crane M2. Um, super lightweight. I thought that this would be the perfect gimbal uh, for this point and shoot, but unfortunately, they don't pair perfectly. 
Uh, the Leica is a little irregular when it comes to its shape and it kind of just comes a little too wide off the side and it really just runs the battery out. Uh, I probably got like two hours out of this thing before it died and this is on a full charge and this is shooting continuously as well. But I was happy with the shots that I was able to get but this gimbal is actually made more for like the smaller traditional point and shoots like a RX100 or like a GoPro. It's not built for this camera specifically. Uh, but I just wanted to test it out anyways, and this is what some of the shots look like. All right, so you're probably wondering how much this camera costs, and it sits a little under five bands, uh, $4,955 retail, which is kind of pricey for a point and shoot very pricey for a point and shoot actually to be completely honest with you guys um, compared to just shooting on your phone but if you don't got the money to buy this camera it's all good i still highly suggest that you invest some money into a point and shoot camera just one that fits in your pocket um, because you don't want to lug around you know a big camera all the time like realistically if you're a creator or you're just a casual uh, you know photographer, amateur photographer, you're just getting into this. Uh, maybe this wouldn't be for you, but you, if you got the bread, you know, you get the quality. Like some days I like stepping out the house with this guy. Seven pounds, you know, 1DX plus 85 millimeters plus a couple other lenses. But this is more for like work, job, uh, professional clients, and definitely a reliable beast. But the mini baby beast, this camera is definitely going to be taken on trips. I'm just in love with this camera. It's kind of weird to say, cause I don't really say that about a lot of things. But these past couple of months have been so much fun shooting on this because it's compact, it's light. Personally, I, when I first started using it and I was just trying to get used to the camera controls and everything, I was a little confused because I never shot on a Leica before. Now, I forgot to mention that in the beginning, like this is my first time shooting on a Leica. Now that I know how to kind of like navigate around the camera controls and getting shots, I'm not as fast as I could be. I'm still working on that, but it's just fun. It's fun to be able to move stuff around, change the aperture, change the shutter, change the focus and not shoot on auto mode. But this video was not sponsored by Leica uh, in any shape or form. This is just me. Uh, investing into something that I wanted to try out and really love the results and I just wanted to share with you guys how much I enjoyed shooting with this camera but if there are any Leica shooters on here on my YouTube channel uh, let me know in the comments down below uh, let me know if you enjoyed this video and videos like this I'm looking forward to creating more I got a couple more videos on the way so yeah stay tuned uh, hope you guys are staying safe drinking water, and staying creative. Stay safe, drink water, stay creative. I guess that's kind of cool. I'm gonna just end it with that. All right, you guys, late.